Hello there everybody and welcome to uh, the most recent part of my how to build an advanced 8-bit computer inside Minecraft. I, I don't know which episode we're on right now, it's, I've kind of lost track with all the stuff that's been going on. Um, yeah, it's been about two weeks since I did the last one, but I hope you're kind of getting used to that now. <laughs> I'm being pretty infrequent. But yeah, let's, uh, let's just get straight into it. Now, you may be wondering why we're back at the design stage, and that's because I just wanted to clear a couple of things up with what we'll be doing. Okay, so here's the ALU, and that is right above us in blue. And here are the general purpose registers. They're over there in yellow. We have the decoders, which aren't actually shown on here, but they're in red because the rest of like the RAM memory stuff is done in red. There are there, so what do we need to do now? We need to do the output register. And now the output register sits in between the ALU and the general purpose registers and it is updated every clock cycle. So every time the compute the um CPU is given a command, that register is updated with um the current output of the ALU and it serves as like a in-between register between the ALU to the GPR so we don't get um like weird write back errors. So if we like read something and then we send um compute it and then write it back. We might get weird errors if um if it's not timed correctly, the um the registers in time uh, these registers aren't clocked correctly or so um so yeah that just kind of gets rid of that error and it also provides us with a nice constant output for which we can take the um uh, which we can use, sorry, for the BCD output, so for the um, the binary coded decimal, so the big display. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be out. We're going to be bussing this output here back up to here, putting a register in here called the output register, which will hold whatever is currently being outputted from the ALU, and sending that output into the inputs of our general purpose registers. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Now, if you haven't already been able to tell, actually, let's um, do something a bit fancy and let's use slabs. Uh, so, yeah, if you haven't already been able to tell, hopefully you have done, but if you're a bit oblivious and it's been a long week, maybe you haven't. Uh, but, yeah, my <laughs> let's get to the point. Uh, my mic finally arrived and it sounds amazing compared to what I was using before. I used my uh, TMI headset before, which was, it was decent. But the team has built for good sound quality, as in like good output sound. Whereas uh, this snowball mic is dedicated to good audio input, so the voice recognition should be decent, and just the speech quality should be a hell of a lot better than it was before. Because I know everyone, <laughs> well not everyone, some kind of people didn't uh, didn't remind me about it every video, <laughs> but quite a lot of people did saying, like, "Oh, my right ear is lonely." And yeah, I had um, single-sided audio for quite a while, which sucks, but yeah, not much I could do about that. Let's just stack, uh, select the points which I did, so I'm kind of losing track of things, and then stack that seven times, so we have it all the way across. And now get your green wool, and just bus it, basically, just do a wire to the help, uh, to the next place, so just kind of something a little bit like this, I guess. Uh, is that going to interfere? Nope. Uh, just take it all the way along. Okay, we want to be wary of buds here, so half slab. And then, okay, so let's just carry it up a few more and leave it there because we need a register in here. Okay, so now we have this built, we can stack it along. Okay, so where was I? Oh yeah, uh, talking about my microphone. Yeah, I had a external sound card. Well, I still do which um, I connected my TMATs to. So I had my TMAT, which is my headset, um, running into my external sound card, and then the external sound card had a USB, which ran back into, well, actually ran into a USB hub, and the USB hub was then connected to the computer. And that was kind of complicated, and it still is. I've still got all that set up for the audio quality, and I needed all of that because my TMAT has what is called 7.1 um, sound channel, which means that there are a ridiculous number of speakers in my headset. Um, individual speakers. I think they're five in each ear, which is crazy, but that means that I get the full surround sound, like side, back, career, um, sub, centre and front, that's six actually. Um, I get all of that in just my headset, so it's ridiculous. 
um, audio quality absolutely amazing and that's perfect for like Black Ops uh, Battlefield 3 where you can like pinpoint the sound to exactly where it is so footsteps become so much easier to hear and yeah it's just amazing but since I use a laptop my Alienware which is a very good laptop um, I couldn't my computer couldn't handle the 7.1 sound it couldn't generate that sound um, so yeah I had to get an Excel sound card to generate the 7.1 sound or basically to split 2.1 sound which is just dual channel into 7 channel or 6 channel 5 channel whatever and um, yes yeah, so that's why I have that oh, bother. Uh, undo expand one stack seven. I'm just doing this bit by bit because if you remember the ALU like it isn't fully stackable you have to do like two bits and make that like those two bits stackable and then stack it stack all that across and if I was to select like from here all the way up to here all of this wiring around here oop all the wiring and ALU would get a bit messed up so it's just nice to make sure you do it correctly um, so yeah that's why I had my external sound card oh, one second I'm getting a bit confused um, and my okay so I haven't even got to the point of why I needed why I had dual uh, single channel audio just stack this and I can resume stack six actually okay so there we go that should all be connected and if you're not stupid like I am you'll have got rid of that so yeah okay so external sound card I had that set up um, which was which was nice it worked it took me quite a while to get it all set up because as you can imagine it's kind of complex having all the wiring and I used the um, the external USB port, um, hub port thing uh, because I needed my iPhone connector cable my uh, my headset USB so in the TMATS there's obviously the USB which has to be powered so that then goes into that I have an external hard drive to keep all the videos on um, I have what else do I have back there let's go and have a look um, hmm. oh yeah and I had also have my cooling mat I have a fan powered cooling mat which you might be able to hear from time to time in the background to um, generate a bit of coolness <laughs> from my laptop because that's one downfall of it it gets rather hot so yeah, that uh, that's why I use my USB. I keep on stalling because building and commentating gets quite difficult when you're doing something complex. All the busing really isn't. You know what I mean? We're building a computer. That's complex enough. Lay off me. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I had my external sound card, and my external sound card has three microphone inputs. It's got a line input, which is usually like. Uh, I don't know what this used for, but yep, let's move on from that one. And then it has a mono input and a um, stereo input. I think mono is for single channel and stereo for dual channel. And what would what should happen is if you don't have two inputs to put into like both um, both inputs, providing the left and right. If you just put one in to the uh, left, I think it is, um, you should automatically think, all oh, right, okay, we've only got one, um, we've only got one microphone input immediately convert that to both ears so play it through as if it was stereo I think that's what it looks like one second let me have a look at my sound card yeah. Uh, yeah mono and stereo so yeah and my TMATs only come with one like microphone cable thingy so I just plugged one in and I'm like okay that should work I should get both sided dual sided audio but no it only I think it's fraps as well that does it but it only records in single sided if I remember correctly, I've used Audacity a couple of times, and um, I get dual audio then. Um, Audacity recognises it, but Fraps, being Fraps, didn't really recognise that. It sh it wanted both ears, so it just recorded one, which sucks. But yeah, but my new uh, my new blue microphone, <laughs> blue is the make. It's not literally blue. That'd be a bit silly. <laughs> um, everything should be sorted so now we've got this done I need to go and take a quick break get a drink and see how we should build this register right then I am back and I have designed the output register it's a kind of neat design which I've um, I've seen used a couple of times but I um, I kind of take credit no I don't really take credit I won't take credit because I'm not sure if I created it in the first place 
So yeah, this is what you want to do. Just to the uh, to the left of this slab, which is above this piston, come out two. Uh, come out three, sorry. And then you want to go diagonally one down to the left. Up one. Diagonally down one to the left. Up one again. And then connect it up to there. So you want a little bit like that. And then you want redstone here and here. Want redstone here and here. And this is important. You want your repeater facing that way, like that. And then above the repeater, you want to place a block and a piece of redstone like that. So here we have what is known as a basil flop, or actually at the moment it's just an infinite loop. So when you input something into it, it is always on until you break one of these, and that forms the basil flop. Named after someone called Basil, I believe. I think he was on the RDF. Everything good is built on the RDF, redstone wise. Tee <laughs> hee. Uh, so yeah, let's um, let's carry on with this. Above this gap here, we need to place a piston. Get rid of that, facing down. And then above this gap here, we also need to place a piston facing down like that. And then we have that sort of situation. Place a block there. Repeat on there, register on top, and then expand it out one because that's going to be our save line. Okay, so here's what happens: we have data coming out of the reg out of the ALU. It's coming in like that. We give this a pulse. Obviously, this will be a short pulse coming out of the clock. And as you can see, it wiped the zero from the memory, and then it stored the one. And now, if that turns off. That's what we have. We um, the input doesn't affect the basil flop, and now there's zero coming through, and we give it another pulse. It clears it, and whatever's being input here, so zero will be written to memory. So yeah, that's what we um, what we have there. It's nice and quick, and um, you can give it two tick pulses, I believe. I'm not too sure. Maybe three tick is the maximum, but you can give it nice and quick pulses, and it will always work. So now, as always, we build it once and we stack it across the board. So, uh, actually, yeah, let's go from go from there. Wait, what? Huh? Maybe I already have that position selected. Okay. All right. So you want to select your pause one there. I don't know why that's not selecting it, but hopefully it will work. Um, and then come up to there uh, and right click get your pause two and then stack that across seven times whoa 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 undo that all right okay so i guess that's not selecting my pause one for some reason let's try somewhere else let's try there okay so that's selected now let's reselect that one okay there we go now let's try the stacking well did it you so glitchy and I forgot to do this bit. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, ah, brother, why does it always do that? That doesn't happen when you use the World Edit plugin for single player, uh, for multiplayer, sorry. Only what happens when you're playing single player. Just my head in. Okay, let's stack that seven across as well. There we go. And for some reason we, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to change that. Ah, so annoying. Um, expand one um, and then stack seven. Yay! It lives. Right, so <laughs> that's um, that's looking nice. Oh, I forgot this thing here. I can't bother stacking that. Let's just do it manually. Yeah, it'd be a bit bad if we built everything and that wasn't connected. It would not be good at all. So yeah, the CPU is really coming together nicely now. Um, the last thing to do is to add repeaters. So let's see if I get rid of that, that's going to be the longest input. Whoa, I'm running out of hydro space, I think. Oh, I'm getting some weird lag spike. Aye, that doesn't quite reach. That's annoying. Okay, I'm lagging. I'm lagging. I'm not lagging this lag. So you come here and then. Wow. Let me help. Okay, that was really weird. Uh, just place repeaters and all of these. Hopefully that will 
work I have had troubles with repeaters on this bus line before because of um, very signal strength worries hopefully that will reach as well no nope. oh you're kidding me doesn't quite reach oh well looks like we're gonna have to add repeaters here I'm just wondering now these repeaters might need to be changed but I guess it's not a big deal uh, make sure they aren't going into this block that wouldn't work because this is like a disabler enabler kind of thing and if you if you had that there it'd automatically go through even though that's meant to be blocking the signal and I've just realized that I've missed something off here as well we need this block it's escaped escaped that doesn't even make sense I don't know what I was doing with that one expand one just that ah my typing sec 7 okay so that's that done and now let's uh, see I gave it a really quick pulse and it worked perfectly so let's see where we need to add repeaters here uh, can't add oh yeah that's perfect as long as this is as long as this block is being powered it will bud this which is part of the member cell I explained that before so we can add them on there nice so technically now with just the to read commands, the write command, and what, uh, with whatever operation from the opcode, this is technically just about a CPU, just about. So we could do something, we could save it to memory, and then we could use that to do something else and save that to memory, and we could keep on doing that, and we could build up various answers and do pretty complex stuff just from using this situation here. So most people who come onto the idea think that this is a CPU, and it's not really because it doesn't have any uh, any um, what do you call it <laughs> instruction input, and doesn't have much output, and no memory control, and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's a bit more to do yet, but we are well on the way to getting this uh, getting this done. So as always, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let's go and replace this before we forget about it and I hope you'll stick around for the next one so yeah please like comment and subscribe